A car with those two all important words, style and substance. Well, you're looking at it. The Fiat Brava and Bravo arrived in 1995, with the aim to spice up Fiat's then cheap, nasty, fix it again tomorrow reputation, with the Marea Saloon and Marea Weekend Estate to follow shortly after. The brief was simple, to create a car not only with sex appeal, but with enough girth not to fall apart as well. And I'm paraphrasing here, but at the time, Fiat's boss said to the workers on this Brava, that if there's any squeaks or rattles, I'll fucking throttle ya. Fiat Bravo, Fiat Brava, car of the year 1996. It looked like Fiat had well and truly pulled it off, a car that looked better than the Astra, Escort, Almira and even Citroen ZX. It even had a class leading boot and won Car of the Year 1996. So thus far the Brava is the bollocks really and it continues in here albeit on a lesser scale. It might not be as aesthetically pleasing as the outside, but this really isn't the ugliest setup that I've ever seen. Build quality is good to be honest, and there's a lot to like, especially compared to what Fiat brought us in the years after. The party piece in this SX trim level is this tilt and slide electric sunshine roof, which still works here in 2023. There was also an option of a six CD changer, as uh, it's smugly displayed on the head unit there, but this car either it was stolen or it doesn't have it. The phrase throwback is banded around an awful lot these days, but that normally refers to a Pitbull song from 2014. A real throwback though, if you ever wanted to know what one was, is these patterned seats that match the outside of the car. So we are very colour coordinated in here, very Italian chic. Uh, they've got a really cool funky 90s pattern on and of course they're green just like the car. Um, and as well as the sunroof these seats create a nice bright and airy cabin um, as opposed to the more darker plastics on the dashboard. We've also got some handy and what could be described as quite upmarket features in this car. Perhaps the coin tray down here will just be described as handy, but something I think is quite upmarket for a 10 grand car back in the day is lumbar support for the driver's seat. You can also adjust the seat for height and adjust the steering wheel up and down as well. But the real centerpiece has to be the his and hers ashtray. Now, if you don't smoke, then don't worry because this his and hers ashtray folds away into the dashboard. But if you do smoke, then this ashtray is a real blessing because there's nothing I hate more than when manufacturers go out the way to design an ashtray, but then it's rendered useless by the cars or the switch gear, etc, etc. Not the case in the Brava. Fiat really did tick the equal opportunities box before it was even a thing, uh, meaning that driver and passenger, him, her, him, him, she, she, they, them, they all get equal access to the ashtray, just like when you all stood around a bonfire. Now, one of the reasons that Sharon and Ozzy Osbourne praised the Brava so highly back in the day was because that Fiat went to the trouble of fitting an ashtray in the back so their children could enjoy a nice smoke from tour location to tour location. Now, space really isn't an issue in the Fiat Brava, if you sat behind Sharon Osbourne, that is. But if you're sat behind my six foot identical twin, well, uh, legroom really, really is an issue. There's also a price to be paid for the Brava's style here in the back. Headroom is hampered by that electric sunroof. And if you were to inadvertently take your Fiat Brava on an off-road trail, then your passengers in the back would end up concussed, as I found out. <laughs> <laughs> The first thing that strikes you about the Brava is that it feels a lot bigger than it actually is. There's a lot of space around you and the car feels very wide. That's not a bad thing though because it feels very manageable and actually gives you a little bit more confidence in the car. And there's no trade-off because I can still quite easily reach over to this passenger door handle without straining myself. A good thing to know if you're picking up any ladies of the night. Fucking, fucking swat, fuck off you fucking bitch. 
If you do pick up any ladies of the night though, and you're doing any parallel parking, make sure you let them out first to guide you in to the space. The visibility out that back window, well, the whole world just disappears into the abyss when you look through that back window to try and parallel park. But that is a small price to pay for the sheer style of this car. Something that you can't say about most modern cars. Despite all the feeling of extra space, you still feel very well in touch with the job in hand. For example, the windscreen isn't miles away from the dashboard and the steering wheel, and the Fiat Brava is a very, very well-proportioned car. Now, initially you got a 1.4 petrol engine in the Brava, but in later models and in this car, we've got the old 1.2 fire engine seen in the Alpunto. Now, if you want my professional opinion, which I know you do, a 1.2 liter engine in a car of this size is pushing it a bit. And you kind of notice that in the power delivery. This, for example, feels a lot more sluggish off the line than my one liter Citroen Saxo. Given it's due though, the little 1.2 is a very rev happy engine and it's notorious for that. And at 70, 80 miles an hour, the 1.2 engine settles down into just a nice refined little cruiser, to be honest with you. Then I'm not just saying that because I've read it on Parker's or Honest John, I've done the miles. This car has been to the Lake District, it's been to London, it's been to Festival of the Unexceptional in Lincolnshire. So I think I can safely say that I've done plenty of motorway miles in this car. Fuel economy is also a good thing to mention in this car. 570 miles in the end was what I eked out of the fuel tank in this car. And that's long after I made the return journey from London as well. London back and beyond, 570 miles from a tank. And that's in a 1.2 petrol that's 23 years old. Ride, handling and performance, well, they're all very pretty middle of the road, really. The steering and gear shift, they are unsurprisingly very light. And to be honest with you, when you put the Brava into a few corners or try and have a little bit of fun with it, it's not boring to drive. It's just not a car that you'd really put all your faith into on a country road. The ride quality, well, it is a little bit firm, but having just mentioned that I've been to London, Lincolnshire and the Lake District in this car, that's not to say that it's an uncomfortable ride at all. It really isn't. Now the phrase throwaway fashion seems to be banded around a lot recently, but let me give you some real throwaway fashion. There were 15,000 Bravas on the road in 2012. And according to confuse.com, which is an insurance website, there are just 767 left today. But according to someone who I was speaking to at Festival of the Unexceptional, there actually is double figures, not triple figures, of these Fiat Bravas left. And that is some throwaway fashion right there. The Brava would later be outclassed by the fantastic Mark I Ford Focus, where the hatchback class would be given a shake-up once more. But who'd have thought that after 25 years since its launch, it would still be the Fiat that offered style and substance with such little compromise? The Brava is competent, easy to live with, and with there being so little of them left on the road now, they really are something special as well. But above all, this car is drop dead Milan catwalk shit your pants gorgeous. See you next time.